Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 15 of our platformer game, and in this video we will be adding power-ups. Okay, so before we go too far into the power-ups, there's one thing I wanted to do to talk about about the platform collisions. Now, you may have noticed this, and it's kind of should be obvious why it's happening, but if you stand over here on the edge, you can look like you are floating in space, right? Because, there we go. So the hitbox of my player is just still barely touching the hitbox of the platform. So the, you know, our code is seeing this as a collision. And of course it happens over here too. And, you know, that's a little weird. Um, we shouldn't be able to jump when we're standing in the in midair like that. So fortunately, there's an easy solution to this. And since we're using the X, the center here as our position for our player, we can just say when that position, if that position extends past the edge of the platform on either side, then we won't collide. We won't stop falling. Okay, so we can go down to our platform collision code, right? And this little, this if statement here is what puts us on the top of the platform, stops us from falling. So basically we only want to do that if our player is between the, the left and right edge of the platform. Um, so we can say if the player's pause x is less than the platform that we're hitting's right, and the player um, pause x is greater than the lowest rect dot left. Now, you'll notice this line is getting pretty long, right? That's a really long line. And long, long lines are kind of a pain. Um, there's a couple different things you can do to solve that. I mean, Python does let you do this. If you put a backslash, and you continue around, then you can um, you can say this. It sees this as one line, right? So it doesn't count as uh, two separate lines. We do want to indent the if. Now that's not super pretty, but it's good enough for now. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, so I'm hitting this platform because my x position is less than this spot and it's greater than this spot. So let's go over to a platform where we can fall off. Now watch as I reach the edge. There we go. See how? So that is not counting as a collision, right? I'm falling right off the side as soon as my center gets that side. But that doesn't quite look right because my foot should still be touching. So we want to give that a little bit extra space. So we're going to say, I'm just going to add a little bit, just a little extra 10 pixels on either side. And I just picked 10 out of thin air just to see what it looks like. So let's get up to one where we can fall. So now I can walk to there. My foot's still touching. Oh, and then I fall. Okay. So you can see that looks much better. It looks much more natural, especially when we walk off the edge, uh, that we fall when our feet aren't on the edge supporting us. Okay, on to power-ups. Now power-ups are gonna be objects that are gonna, that are gonna spawn on the screen. And for these, I want these power-ups to spawn attached to a platform. So I don't want them floating in midair or, or kind of half overlapping a platform. I want them to be resting on platforms, like they're objects that are sitting there uh, that will go fine. So, so when we make the new sprite, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy some of this stuff so I don't have to retype it. All right, bad indenting, there we go. Um, okay, so so what we want to do is we're going to call this, I'm just going to call this a POW for power up. Okay, now when we spawn a power up, we're just going to pass it a platform that, you know, we're going to, so we're going to pass it what platform it needs to be sitting on. 
So that way it'll know where it needs to be. And so we're going to do the init self.game. We'll keep track of that platform. Uh, we don't have a list of images. I don't need that. Uh, but we do need our image. So, our, so first of all, we are going to have multiple types of platforms. Now, to start with, um, I'm going to, did we import? Yes, we imported choice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just have one platform, or I mean, I'm sorry, one type of power up to start with, and that's a boost, one that shoots you upwards. Um, later, we can have more and we can improve this randomness here and choose different random ones, whatever we want to do. Uh, but for now, we're just going to stick with one. And the boost image is going to be over here in our sprite sheet. It's this little jetpack. So we're going to use that, set the color key to black, get the rectangle. And our location, so our where we place the where we place the power up sprite is just going to be at the center of the platform. And then the bottom of the sprite will be at the uh, top and a little bit up. So I just want to look like it's sort of just barely floating right there above it. Now, as far as the update for our sprite, we're going to just make sure we keep, we just want to keep the bottom of the sprite um, at that point, right? So that way, if the when the platform moves, so will the power up. And if, now, if th we want to delete these, uh, these power ups when the platform disappears, right? And the platform, so the platforms go off the bottom and then they disappear, right? That means this uh, self.plat won't exist anymore. So we'd get an error message. So we want to make sure we delete the sprite whenever, or the power up sprite whenever the platform sprite gets deleted. So we can do that by using the self.game.platforms group, right? Uh, that group has a list of all the platforms, right? And they get removed from that group when they go off the bottom and get deleted. So in Pygame with uh, groups, you can, do, you can do the has command. And this will return true or false. So this, this command will be true or false whether the platform exists in the platform group. And if it doesn't, so if this is false, then we will delete the power-up sprite as well. Okay, so that's our power-up sprite. Now, we have to talk a little bit about groups some more. So you recall, if I go back over here to our new, we have these, we have these groups where we are placing the different sprites in, right? We add the player to the all sprites group. When we spawn a platform, we add it to, the, to both groups. That starts to get tedious having to do this, right? We had to do that here, down here, when we spawn some new platforms, we also have to add it to both, right? Well, there's an easier way to handle groups. And that way is if we go over here, actually real quick, let me make a we're going to need a group for power up so that we can do the collision. So I'm going to say power ups is a PG sprite group, right? Now, so the game has these three groups, and we know we're going to be wanting to add different sprites to them. So we can do that instead of doing it as a separate command every time we spawn the sprite, we can do it when the sprite is actually. Uh, initiated. So let's see here. So we'll start with our power up here. So if we make a list here, right when, um, right before, and it's important we do this before the sprite class in it, okay, we name a list of groups. So in this case, we want game.all sprites and game.power. 
power-ups, right? Those are the two groups that I want the power-up sprites to be in. Then I can just add here to the init that it should do that. Now, if I do that, I can do the same thing with the platforms, right? Self.groups equals, so this is going to be game.all sprites and game.platforms. This makes it a lot easier if later on, as you're as you're changing things uh, and you add different groups for different kinds of effects or different um, different code that you want to add that needs more groups, you can easily just add here in the sprite a list of which which groups it needs to be a part of. Okay, so if we do that, then over here. We no longer need this line. Oops, we no longer need that line. We no longer need either of these lines. And in fact, we don't need, when we spawn a platform, we don't even need to assign it to a variable because it's going to get added to the group. So I can do that there, and I can do it here as well. Okay, and now everything should still work the same, right? We're still spawning and all the group collisions and stuff is still working. But we've simplified some of our sprite creation and we're ready to do the power-up spawning. Okay, so let's add a couple more game settings over here. We're going to add um, a couple of things here. I'm going to add a boost power that we're going to use for when we how how fast the boost shoots us upwards, and we're also going to um, add a number for how frequently we want these power-ups to spawn. So I'm going to put about something less than 10. Right? So this is how likely every time a platform spawns that it will have a, how likely it is to have a power-up on it. Right? So in the platform in it, right here when the platform spawns, we're just going to give it a chance to have a power-up on it. And all we need to do for that is we could pick a random number between 1 and 100, or 0 to 99 technically. And if it's less than the power-up spawn percentage, then we'll spawn a power-up. We pass it a copy of self.game, and we pass it a copy of the platform itself. Okay, and then uh, oh, we are going to need rand range up here. And let's see how that works. Oh, there we go. So that one spawned and has a, a power up on it. So now we can see that most of the platforms aren't having power ups on them, but every once in a while, oh, we got a dry spell here. Oh, there's another one. And again, once we start spawning different kinds of power-ups, we can change that percentage around very easily. So all that's left is here in our update to just check for collisions with the platforms, I mean with the uh, power-ups. So we can stick this in here. Uh, this is going to be if player it's a power up. Okay, so uh, much like we've done before, we're going to do a sprite collide between the player and the power ups. And we want the power ups to disappear. Uh, we might conceivably hit more than one. So um, if 
the power up type is boost. Remember, we might have other types of power ups later. Then we are going to take our players y velocity, and we're going to just shoot upwards at whatever the boost power was. And we're also going to set our jumping equal to false because we don't want to have the jump cut stop our stop our boost in the middle. Okay, so let's see how that works now. We'll go find a boost power up spawn for us. There we go. Oops, oh, self dot player, player velocity. Game doesn't have a velocity. Oh, there's a couple. All right, there we go. So now we're getting some, all right, we can get pretty uh, high scores now. Oh, unless that happens. Oh, what a bummer. Anyway, you can see the power-ups are working. And now we have a chance to boost. If we hit another one along the way, it's going to boost us again so we can chain them together. Um, might, maybe we will update or uh, increase that spawn percentage because they're not coming up very often. I thought 7% would be plenty, but that's good. Okay, and so that'll about do it, except I do want to add one more thing, which is um, it would be nice to have a sound play when we hit the power up. So let's go and add a sound here. So I am going to duplicate that line and made it make a boost sound. And the sound I have for that, I got this one. So I'm just going to, I'm going to duplicate this line. It's going to be a boost sound. And this was, the sound I have is boost 16, another one I just created. Uh, you can use sound effects or again like we did in the previous one. And then we're just going to want to play this boost sound right here where we just added. All right. That'll give us some good feedback when we get boosted. Let's find one. Of course, when you're trying to find one to test it out, the random number generator doesn't cooperate with you. There we go. Perfect. Nice. Okay, uh, this video has gone a little bit long. I apologize for that. Uh, it seemed to go by fast as I was doing it, but suddenly we were way over 10 minutes. So we will stop there for this time. And as always, uh, please click like below. That helps other people find uh, these videos. And uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can get the next one uh, as soon as it's released. And I will see you next time. Thanks.